The bear case for Bitto would be that once you have spot Bitcoin ETFs out there, that the futures back products become obsolete. What's your pushback? Well, listen, we were, of course, thrilled to bring this to market over two years ago, fastest ETF to a billion dollars. We saw $600 million of flows last year, and it's in the top 5% of volume every day. So liquidity, really important. But let's talk about a few things that are important about futures and what they achieve. It's a mature and liquid and regulated place. And combining that in ETF, that belt and suspenders, if you will, has proven to be quite efficacious. There are a lot of things we don't know about the spot market. Number one, things, things that we do know that futures solves. There are multiple prices for Bitcoin. Futures solve it. It's an amalgamation of multiple prices that give you that settlement every day. Other things we don't know. We don't know exactly how cash create in a, in, in a spot ETF will work. We know exactly how we've been creating futures with high volume and tight spreads for over two years now. So those are really important things. And if you think about that roll cost, you know, it's funny. We talked about this on air several times, this notion that a financial future, financial future shouldn't have any storage costs. In other words, that number that kind of looks small in the context of the big return, it almost shouldn't be there. Mm. Uh, and in fact, if you take it from inception, it's about 6% and almost half that's fee. But think about it. It's almost analogous to a storage cost. And why do I say that? The spot market is still a little, let's call it weird. Mm. FTX, Binance, stuff, things, shaggy haired guy in the news. <laughs> the access to the futures market, that roll cost, it's almost like a pseudo storage cost. Won't be there forever, but futures mature, regulated spot question marks.